So I have a, so we're not going to eat today, but we have a lot of topics that we want to discuss that happened this week. A lot has happened. Um, we have the, the passing of First Lady Barbara Bush. Mm -hmm. We have Wendy Williams. Then we're going to bring up a, a couple other things. Um, we're going to revisit the Carlton Pearson topic and see what was going on with that. Um, I don't know really uh, which one we should start with. Let's start with the Carlton Pearson thing because that's probably going to take mm. a lot of the time. Mm. Y'all better get ready. That's going to take a lot of the time. So, mm. so let me give you some background. Carlton Pearson came out with a movie called Come, Come Sunday. Mm -hmm. And this can be viewed on Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, and it's basically a, uh, I don't want to say an autobiography, but it is based on his book that he's written called Come Sunday. Mm -hmm. And the book was basically about the doctrine of inclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, and let me break that down to people who don't understand the doctrine of inclusion. The doctrine of inclusion basically says Christ died for our sins and because he's already died for the sins of the world, the world is already forgiven and that way everybody will already make it into heaven. I'm just breaking mm -hmm. it down. In basically. Terms. Basically is what he's saying. So, um, the Pentecostal church, and I'm, I'm emphasizing that for a reason because that's what was emphasized in the movie. The Pentecostal church did not like what was being taught and so they went against him and he was named a heretic and with the coming out of his movie uh, he mentioned a couple of well-known pastors preachers bishops in the Pentecostal church and they did not like it so they responded this weekend um Gregor, you want to say something yes no. <laughs> Go ahead, get started. Well, let me just say this. When I watched it, because um, James was telling me about it, and when I watched it, I think we talked about this maybe a little bit on uh, Mukbang, maybe not. Mm -hmm. But when I watched Come Sunday, I I loved the movie, and I read the book, The Gospel of um, Inclusion by Carlton Pearson. So I have a perspective from, you know, reading the book, and then watching the video. And let me say this. It's funny because on CNN, they have a series that they do on, on the Pope. It's called The Pope, The Most Powerful Man in the World or something like that. And I watched that. So it kind of put me in a mindset of, um, you know, the history of the church, the Catholic church and the Inquisition. And whenever, you know, they label somebody a heretic, and in the movie Come Sunday, um, the way they set it up, they had um, all the, the College of Bishops in a circle, and it was 500 of them, I think. Bishop Ellis said it was 500 of them there. And um, Bishop uh, Pearson was in the center of it. And he was giving his argument on the gospel of inclusion. This is the depiction in the movie. Yes, that's what the movie depicted. Right. Now, um, let me tell you the controversy. Bishop Ellis has a video on YouTube where he says Bishop Carlton Pearson lied on him. <laughs> and he went into a spiel about, um, you know, why he believed Bishop uh, Pearson lied. And um, that's, that's irrelevant whether he, you know, we're not trying to prove he lied or didn't lie. But what I'm concerned about is the, the um, way that Bishop Ellis presented himself as a bishop and his response to um, Carlton Pearson and his high intense level of judgment was so cruel. I mean, all he needed to do was just put the man on a stake and burn him like they did the witches at the Inquisition. It was, it was, it was, it was a bit... Um, I mean, he was over the top. It and was a bit. On top of him being over the top, he his argument um, as to why he felt that Bishop Pearson was a heretic made very little sense. But you know, he did say that Bishop Pearson said that he would have to apologize, that Jesus would have to apologize to God. Yes, he but said I didn't he would have to apologize to Satan. Satan. Uh -huh. But I didn't see that in the, I didn't see Carson Pearson say that in the in the footage. I didn't from, see that in the video. Yeah. And I don't remember that pers um, perspective in the movie. in the book. I don't remember that in the book. So if this is something that happened during the quote 
uh, Inquisition, where they were trying, where they were determining whether he was a heretic or not. Um, this could, there's a great possibility that uh, Bishop Carlton Pearson could have said this, and there's a possibility he said he didn't say it. But the issue is, for me, let me show you what I wrote after I watched that, um, watch Bishop Ellis response. This is what I wrote in the comment section. It'll be posted up here. So yes. You can it says, this is the same avenue the Catholic Church took at the Inquisition when anyone disagreed with church doctrine before they were labeled a heretic. The church is wrong and need to stop speaking for God. You don't have a market on God. This bishop is out of order and needs to tell the truth. You know hell is not what you have been preaching it is. And Jesus is one among mul a multiple messiahs that was born of a virgin and died and resurrected. The church is being exposed and they don't like it. Watch how he tickled the emotions of the people. If he went to school and took any classes on Greek and Hebrew or Aramaic, he would know he's not preaching the truth. People definitely need to study outside their religious doctrine and teaching to know what the Bible says and not what has been interpreted to be saying and stop letting people preach at them. Okay. Now, you know why I said that? Because it's very funny how these preachers get in the pulpit and right after he went off on Bishop Carlton, then the organ starts. And he starts tickling the people's emotions. Wait, hold on. Okay, you go ahead. Because <laughs> I can like, go on with that. No, I want you to. I'm just yeah. going to interject because it's so funny. They didn't, you notice in the video they didn't call him Bishop at all. They called him Mr. <laughs> Mr. Pearson. <laughs> okay. And so, um, so, you know, the church, the Catholic church has over a billion followers. Christianity itself has about, oh my God. Um, hundreds of thousands of sects of the religion. So there's so many different levels and um, denominations and um, what is the word I want to use? Um, reformations. Reformations or Organi splits and uh, organizations, organizations is the key word here of Christianity. And they all came out of um, someone's interpretation of the Bible. You remember the um, Luther, Martin Luther, and the split of the church where he, you know, he believed that the Bible said that the kingdom of God is inside of you and that you don't need to go through no man, okay, because they definitely want said that, um, you know, you cannot interpret the Bible or get an understanding of the Bible outside of the interpretation of the bishop, okay. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the that's the Catholic Church. Oh, but Martin Luther. Yeah, Luther that's Luther. why the the Pope is called the Vicar of Christ. Wasn't he labeled a heretic? Martin yes, Luther. Martin Luther was definitely labeled a heretic. But yet, people say now he's one of the greatest. Because people waking <laughs> up, <laughs> they waking up, and so the the Pope and they 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 all the Pope is the Vicar of Christ. And the vicar of Christ means that he is in Christ's stead on earth. He speaks for Christ on earth and in heaven because they said he's the, um, what is the word um, I want to use? He came after Peter, okay? When Jesus said, on this rock I will build my church. And so they inherited their bishop and their popiness, <laughs> their vicarness from Peter. So the church, that's Catholicism, but even when you look at the Pentecostal church, the apostolic church, and church in general, they set up the same way. They got a college of bishops, a cardinal of bishops, mm -hmm. bishops, they got all the guard, the same thing. What's the difference? Why would they have an inquisition for Bishop Carlton? I mean, I don't, I'm, 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 I'm at a loss. This man is entitled to his opinion and his interpretation of the scriptures, just like all those 500 bishops sitting in that inquisition had their interpretations. They don't all agree. They just ain't going to say it because they won't keep their call. So my opinion of the matter, um, I really don't have an opinion because a lot of it has to deal with doctrine, doctrinal beliefs, um, whether someone's right or wrong whether heaven or hell exists in someone else in someone else's opinion to me it doesn't really matter um as far as what's happening now 
to me, I think that we have gone so far left with this that um, people are handling people out. They're not handling people in love. Mm -hmm. They're not handling people with respect. Mm -hmm. They're not handling people with kindness. Everyone, because I feel like, for example, if you think about this, back in the 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. It was this kind of thing was kind of almost big when women bishops was and women preachers mm -hmm. was gracing the pool. I mean, this mm -hmm. was the same type of, mm -hmm. you know, they're going against, you know, mm -hmm. what the Bible says. And, mm -hmm. and actually there is now I was talking to a friend of mine and the same there's a pastor. His name is well, I don't want to say his name, but he is a he's a big he's a he passes a very well-known church in Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. and he he serves the LGBTQ HMLP. <laughs> <laughs> he, ser he serves the LGBTQ community, mm -hmm. and because of his doctrine of inclusion, and why I say inclusion, in the sense of that everyone's included in the, everyone has access to. Are you talking about Bishop Pearson? No. Oh, this is another bishop. This is another bishop. And he he goes with the gospel of inclusion as well. Well, not in the sense of Excuse me. everyone make it to heaven. Right. In the sense of he's he's a he's inclusive. Okay. So um, you know he preaches um, um, you know gay people, um, people who live in the LGBTQ BTQ community, mm -hmm. they will. They have access to God just like the straight community does. Right. They they have the ability to um, function and mm -hmm. operate in church, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and God. They're able to be used of God, and they're able. They have access to God as much as the heterosexual does. Mm -hmm. That's his basically overall right. arching of his church, right. and he has a big following of outcasters mm -hmm. where people who were a part of that community are not able to feel comfortable in the traditional church mm -hmm. because they're maybe a little more flamboyant or mm -hmm. you have some who have transgender you know has transitioned from girl to male mm -hmm. or you have some girls who maybe a little harder than the average mm -hmm. female mm -hmm. or boys who are a little more feminine they that's a safe haven for them to go mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. and so he has embrace them and so I said all that to say is this is no diff that is no different from what's going on now mm -hmm. every this the church when and I'm a part of the church but mm -hmm. when the church goes extreme they tend to cast out people and every they they want to make one person the fall guy yeah, absolutely so mm -hmm. um this to me this I think this is a little more I honestly Believe to me, I think it's a little more deeper than Bishop Pearson's doctrine. I'm gonna tell you why, because Bishop Pearson's doctrine has been like this for years. There you go. It's been over ten years that he's been preaching this, but all of a sudden, because people have been exposed mm -hmm. as to how they have treated him and handled him, mm -hmm. they now have to, you know, play. Uh, what is it when you trying to block something? So let me say this. Um, in reference to what you were saying. People are confused. Mm -hmm. And the reason people are confused is because um, these bishops and church leaders are trying to interpret Bishop Carlton's words to their congregations. Although he's saying this is not what I'm saying. He yes. keeps, people keep saying, no, this is what he's saying. Exactly. So they want, they want to give the impression that Bishop Carlton is saying that, um, you know, you can sin and do whatever you want to do and you can still go to heaven. That's not what he's saying. And he said, that's not what I said. Yes. The gospel of inclusion simply means that Christ died for the sins of the world. That's what it means. And that every person born into this world, this particular world, is included in that um, in that pardon of sin. It didn't say that he didn't say nothing about you don't you know sin ain't you don't you you know you can sin and do whatever you want to do. That's not what he said. 
What he's saying is, is that Christ's death on the cross was for every person. And that once Christ died, there was no need for him to die again. Every time you sin or do something wrong or make a mistake or miss the mark, then you have to go and repent and ask Christ to save you all over again. I grew up like that. You know, every Sunday, you know, during the yeah, week, all, uh, <laughs> every, every Sunday, other, you got to get saved all, all over, over again, again because you backslid. Well, you know, backsliding, you know, you can, uh, that is open to interpretation as well. So my thing is this, either Christ died for the sins of the world or he didn't. Okay. And the scripture says that, um, that he's not going to die again. <laughs> That's it. He only died once. He's not going to die again. And so, and also people make the mistake of thinking that the gospel of inclusion is only, he's saying that this is including specific people that the church excludes. That's not what he's saying either, because he's not saying that because you're gay, now all of a sudden you can be gay and, and God will, you know, you can be saved. He's not saying that you can murder somebody and all of a sudden, you know, you, you know, you're saved while you're murdering somebody. That's not what he's saying. What he simply said Wait, is... Wait, so you don't think gay people can be saved? Yes. Oh. What he's saying is... Because what you said was... I said that's not what he's saying. That's what people are saying. People are saying the gospel of inclusion that what Bishop Carlton Pearson is saying is that the gospel of, gospel of inclusion now includes gay people while they are gay. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that's not what Bishop Carlton is saying. Okay. What Bishop Carlton is saying is that it doesn't matter what your sin is. It doesn't matter what your condition is. You are included in the salvation. Now, how you walk that out is between you and God. Mm -hmm. How you walk it out is between you and God. Because the reality of it is, let me tell you something. And I go on with this. You just interrupt me when I need to shut up. Because I'm telling you, this, the church has got me on fire. And I will say this. That um, you can't, you, you can't, people church hop. Let me just say it like that. People church hop. And when they church hop, they go from one church to the other and the church they came from preaches one gospel and one interpretation and the church, another church they go to preaches another gospel and another interpretation. And so people are trying to find a church that fits their interpretation of what they believe God is saying. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if I leave um, the church of uh, the Baptist of the Messiah of the whatever, and then I go down the street to the church of the redeemed of the of the Lord. Say so. I'm looking. I done left the Messiah, the what you call it church, and went to the other what you call it church because I'm trying to find my niche. Right. I'm trying to find which one of these churches fit what I believe and how I want to live my life. Right. So. If, if this church that I was going to no longer fits and it starts squeezing my life, I'm getting out of there and go somewhere else where my life can be a little more broadly experienced. So, you know, I think, you know, Bishop Carlton, I love him. But, you know, um, I don't agree with everything he says, mm -hmm. but I shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to. And, then, <laughs> and that's another thing. We are not, as you're watching this, Mm -hmm. We're not saying either way. Exactly. We're not trying to make this an argument because some people will be like, "Well, here in Revel in 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 in, in, in Peter or in Acts, Paul <laughs> said, you know, Paul said everything." So <laughs> Paul was crazy. I'm just gonna say. But what we're what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get at is mm -hmm. that we have lost the ability to handle people. The compassion. The compassion with differences. Mm -hmm. T.J. said something very well. He said, and quote me, don't quote me, but I remember him saying to people, because they were talking about, um, you know, gays in church. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, 
he does not he of course I because he said he has gay people in his church. He said he has gay Absolutely. Mar- he said he has gay couples, married couples in his church, and you can research that. Well, you know they don't like Bishop um, T D J C. No, no, they don't. And he <laughs> said one thing. He said, he said, if you if you if you live in in a in a L G B T community, mm-hmm. he said, and you're trying to find a place, he said, go to a place that accepts you. Who you are. Oh, absolutely. And so it goes back to what you were saying that mm-hmm. everyone's trying to find a place that fits them. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it boils down to it. Mm-hmm. Pentecostal church did not fit what Carlton Pearson Exactly. Believed. That's exactly And right. there, there's this new thing with everyone evolving with knowledge and mm-hmm. people are doing newer things mm-hmm. and um, picking up new types of thinking with mm-hmm. education. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, Today I may like coconut water. Tomorrow I may breathe something like coconut water. Coconut water exactly. may not be right for me. <laughs> exactly. But doesn't mean that coconut water is not right for you. Exactly. You know. And so I, I have people. <clears throat> I fellowship. I have fellowship with individuals who speak in tongues. Mm-hmm. Um. They shout in church. Mm-hmm. They get happy. Mm-hmm. They cry. Mm-hmm. They believe in. Uh, the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. but they don't necessarily believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Absolutely. And they are black, mm-hmm. and they are Pentecostal. Well, should I call them Pentecostal? I would call them, um, they're Hebrew. We call mm-hmm. them Hebrew Pentecostals. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they believe in the, you know, uh, they believe basically what the tradition or Pentecostal believe taking taking mm-hmm. out Jesus out of the equation. Mm-hmm. Are they going to hell? Mm-hmm. People, this argument is because they're saying, well, you know, Jesus is the only way. Right, right. Because they're going to scripture, I am the way, I am the truth, the mm-hmm. life. No man comes to the Father mm-hmm. except by me. Mm-hmm. But Carlton Pearson said in the video, out mm-hmm. of his mouth, mm-hmm. there are going to be people in the backwoods that will never hear the name of Jesus. But they will cry out to God. Are those people going to hell? He said no. Then he he does not believe that they're going to go to hell because mm-hmm. everyone will not. Be, everyone may not hear the name of what we know as Jesus. Exactly. And let me say this. Um, you know, it's interesting that um, you know the church has this belief system that you know if you don't. If you don't hear the gospel and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to hell. Where there are people who are born every day and they die. Do you hear what I'm saying? They're born, they don't hear no gospel, and they die. There are people who have never All heard, the time. There are people who have never heard the gospel. There are babies who are born. Well, they, they, they live a couple of days. They consider them innocent. And they die. And that ain't no way nowhere in the scripture where it exclude babies from hell. So that's just another freaking interpretation that somebody done put a little spin on to save the babies and to fit the fact that they can make an excuse now and say, well, dead, we got to have mercy on the babies because, you know, the baby, the scripture said everybody born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Is that what it says? That's what it says. So how are you going to exclude them babies? See, y'all messed up out there. I'm going to tell you right now, you messed up. So, the church, though, we as the church, I'm going to exclude my aunt. Yeah, excuse me, because I ain't ain't in that church stuff. We in the church, we become, we we get bullied. We're Mm -hmm. bullies. We are We bullies, are yeah. bullies. Mm-hmm. And what's so funny is we will fight each other, but then yeah. when someone on the outside comes in, mm-hmm. we want to team up with everybody to fight. And the reason why I said I'm...